Hi, this is Greg with Walnut Ridge RV. Today we're going to be doing an orientation video on the Clipper 17FQ. Um, so we'll start up in the front. Now you will have an LP tank um, installed on the unit. Um, when you get it, they just come from the factory, not installed. We do that during our PDI process. Um, it is a single tank uh, with a regulator here on the uh, coach. Uh, nothing you have to do with it besides turn the tank on, turn it off. Um, once your stove and everything stops lighting, you'll know the tank's empty, take it off, go get it filled or exchanged. Um, you also will have a 12 volt deep cycle marine battery on the back here that'll power lights, uh, water pump and things like that when you're not hooked into um, 30 amp power. Uh, it's just got a standard uh, crank up jack on the front uh, to get you on and off your truck and also to level front to back. Uh, pretty much it on this front, we'll move around this side. We have, uh, of course, the VIN tag up here. It will tell you your tire information and axle weights, so you're aware of all that. You have a uh, pat, uh, storage through here. Nice big open storage. Put all your chairs and uh, fish poles, thing like that in. Back here, you have your water hookups. On the top, you have your fresh tank, so if you are going dry camping or if you want some water while you're traveling, you can fill this tank up before you leave. Um, Turn your water pump on the inside and it'll uh, flow just like it would off the city water, um, but you'll have a limited supply of water. Um, below that, you have your city water connection. So when you do get to your campsite, if you're at a um, site with hookup, you just hook up your hose in here, um, use a pressure regulator, hook your hose up, turn it on, you have an unlimited water supply. The only thing besides that is with your fresh tank, um, you will have a drain right here coming off the unit with a cap on it um, just make sure the caps on before you fill it and after you're done using it just go ahead and unscrew the cap drain the water that way it doesn't get um, smells coming out of it um, power cables 30 amp you got a about 25 foot long cable out of here it just comes out pushes back in when you're done um, From there, you have a cable um, and satellite coax if you wanted to hook up to Parks Cable or if you did have a uh, Playmaker satellite, something like that, you could hook up um, and install a TV on the inside. Let's see, down here you have your dump station. So you have two handles. You have a black handle and a gray handle. Um, your black is your toilet and your gray is your bathroom sink, kitchen sink, and shower. Uh, pretty simple operation. You'll always want to make sure that your handles are shut before you start using the unit because this cap is uh, watertight and if you leave them open while you're camping and then you come out here and shut this open this cap it's all going to come out at you. Um, so always make sure those are shut. When you get to the dump site after you're done camping just hook up your hose into here. Always do your black water first. Just pull that out. Wait till it's completely done. Close it and then do your gray. That'll prevent any backwashing into the gray tank. It'll also help clean out your uh, sewer hose with a little bit cleaner water. Uh, you can store your sewer hose in this bumper here. Um, cap just comes off and you can slide the uh, sewer hose down in there. All right, you have a uh, six gallon suburban water heater. This is a gas only model. Um, and there's a switch on the inside that I'll, I'll show you and you just flip the uh, flip the button, make sure the uh, LP tank is on and it'll light once you get it full. So to get it full, um, you wanna make sure that the anode rod slash drain plug is tightened into the bottom here. It's an inch and a 16th socket. Tighten that up um, and snug it up really well. From there, once you hook on to your water source, it'll automatically start filling this. Just come out here, lift this valve open until you see water start shooting out. Once water starts pouring out of here, shut it. Um, your water heater is now full, it's got all the air out of it, and then you can turn on your uh, gas switch and start using it. it. Takes about 15 minutes for it to get hot, maybe a little bit longer on gas. Um, seems to recover a little bit faster. I'm on LP over electric, so that's one plus. Let's see, uh, spare tire on this unit.
Um, you have your refrigerator access here. There's not much in here you'll need to do um, or mess with, but one thing you want to do is make sure you clean it out. Flip those little tabs. Get your hand in there. Um, and then just make sure you clean this out periodically. This is the back of the refrigerator. You have a couple water lines running through there. Um, but, of course, that's a uh, nest for wasps and other bugs to get in there. And you don't want those flying around your camper or getting into important spaces um, and blocking airflow. Uh, refrigerator vent or uh, stove vent here. This tabs just pop out when you get parked. That way, uh, if you use the overhead um, fan on your stove, it'll all exhaust out here. You just kind of clip them back in place when you're done. A couple 110 outlets out here. That way you have uh, some plug-ins. You can plug in the TV or anything you wanted. And then you have your furnace exhaust. It's just going to blow hot air um, when you are running your furnace. One thing you always want to have on here is mud dauber screens. Uh, they protect from mud daubers mainly, but wasps and uh, ladybugs, things like that, getting into the furnace. They can cause a blockage in the squirrel cage, which can either break it or just cause you problems later down the road. Uh, so always have a mud dauber screen covering one of the covering those. So that's about it on the back side. Um, other side of your storage, of course, uh, covers in there. You have the wheel and uh, stabilizing jack cranks. But you do have um, stabilizing jacks on the back side here. Just a standard three quarter inch crank. Crank those up when you're, uh, after you get level, put them down till they're snug and that'll keep you from bouncing around. And you also have two low point drains right here. Um, after you're done camping, uh, you can unscrew these, let the water drain out, and that'll get any water that's in the lines out of the uh, coach. That uh, helps keep the lines sanitized and things like that. Moving inside the camper, right here on the monitor panel, you have an extend and retract switch. You hold the extend button, it's going to retract, extend the awning. Um, and then retract, do the same thing, just hold it in. Until it comes all the way in and snugs up against the coach. Um, you have a monitor panel here that will tell you the levels in your tank. So you have your fresh tank, which is the drinking water tank. Black is your toilet. And then gray is your uh, bathroom sink, kitchen sink, and the uh, shower. So always make sure you use chemicals and the correct toilet paper in your black tank. Because uh, they can clog up the, um, the probes that make these readings. So that's one thing you always want to... Be sure of because you might go dump and then it says it's still full and then you think it's full or two thirds. So always make sure you use chemicals to help break that stuff up. From there you have your water heater for gas. So like I said, once the water heater is full, make sure your LP tank's on. Flip the button and it'll light. Give it about give it a few seconds and uh, you'll hear it start roaring in the back. Um, you have water pump water pump if you are using the fresh tank if you're hooked directly in from a constant city water connection you won't need to use the water pump and you have your ceiling light button of course and the awning um, over here you have your furnace control simple suburban furnace it just kicks on like this and you turn it up pretty much warm to hot um, bottom here is just the gauge kind of tells you what the temperature is inside the coach um, so go ahead and shut that off down here you have a GFI reset, so all the outlets that are outside or any of the other ones that are in the kitchen or near water will reset off this outlet. So if one's ever not working, you see a red light, come over here, push the button, push it back in, just like most homes have. Um, let's see, all the uh, air conditioner. Air conditioner is a manual control. It's got a few different settings on it, so you have off, then you have low fan, high fan, low cool, and high cool. So, uh, most of the time I like to run them on high when I'm using the air conditioner that way it's cycling quick enough. Um, pretty much stops the risk of them freezing up when it's really hot. If it's not that hot out, maybe at night, you can run it on cool or low cool. 
um, high fan and low fan if you just want to cycle some air through here and you also have temperature control from cold to um, kind of a lower lower setting um, see microwave standard microwave nothing really different than any house microwave pretty simple to figure out and you have your light and fan over the stove like I said outside that fans for the exhaust stove um, it's just two burners here you just turn it to light you'll uh, once you have LP on just put you a match to there or a lighter and it'll light same with the other side refrigerator um, these are just standard household refrigerators they're 110 only um, not much once you get plugged in the refrigerator will kick on and start running they take about three to four hours to get fully cold maybe a little bit longer so always give it its time to um, get cold before you start putting food in there you also have another GFI in here so it looks like the outlets um, this one is just for this unit itself and then the one up front is for the one outside um, toilet's pretty easy to work just got a foot lever down here you want to barely push on the foot lever to fill it up with water once there's water in it um, once you're done push it all the way down to flush it and then fill it up again when you're done pretty much it for the bathroom it does have a uh, vent up here you just crank up crank down light switch on the wall uh, let's see what else um, Behind you, there is room for a TV. So if you did want to mount the TV on the wall, there's a little sticker there that kind of gives you an indication of where the backer is. Um, and we, or um, you could mount a TV to the wall and connect into the coax. And then on this side here, you have two USB charging outlets and then 110 um, outlets on both sides of the coach. And then this one does have under bed storage. That's where the LP tank is from the factory. Um, let's see. Last thing, you have a carbon monoxide um, and propane gas leak alarm. Um, so always just be mindful of that being there. If you ever hear it going off, you might want to shut your LP tanks off, let the coach air out for a little bit, and then um, go from there. Last thing is the converter, which is here below the booth. It's got a um, 12 volt side over here with 15 amp fuses. It's got a 40 amp fuse and then a 25. Um, so let's just check, you know, if something's ever not working, this will be the one place you'll want to check first. Um, and then here you have your 110 side, same thing. So we can shut off the microwave, um, AC, converter, and different things like that on the um, breakers. Of course, this couch breaks down into a bed. This table breaks down into a bed. Let's see, uh, I think that's it on this model. Um, these are small, but they do have a lot of features in them. Um, that's pretty much it. So this is Greg again with Walnut Ridge RV. We'll see you next time.